There were only two more mothers in Kentucky left for me. The first was Allen Ginsberg, who arrived by way of that cultural line I had followed from the Beatles on to Dylan, where I found him this sort of interesting guy at Bob's side, sensing he's the guru, but not being quite sure how. Already invested in what I took to be the outlaw canon, Allen was skeleton key, giving not only his art, poetics clear and DIY articulation, and two, the queer and factuality, modernity, its cosmopolitan glory, experimental and demanding, no more fealty to its aspect than what could be accessed for our survival, and the suddenness of vision and of pleasure. Blood and shit were on the table near a leaky Hebrew Bible. The incense stick puffed leaves of grass and scented smoke around the angel head of someone who would soon be in his bed and plainly naked as the ethics of the muse should govern flesh. His motherhood awakened all my senses. He asked that wild question of himself there in Kaddish, musing over whether he should try and just do it with his mother right there in the infirmary just to see how that would feel. You laugh because it's funny, then you laugh like, fuck, it's heavy. He seems really free inside his mind. It's excessive, yet from him it seems so healthy. That's why so many people have him as a mother. They remember so many inhibitions shattered for the fervor and the humor of the quest. Jeff and I went to see him give a reading in Kentucky in Lexington in 1993. Jeff was no longer my mother by then, though we were both still Alan's children and the extremists. He read and sang and chanted. We were joyous, gathered round and beamed and smiled in our nearness to the body of our mother, needy, anxious to go even closer still. So Jeff and I stood there in the long line with our books, waiting for his dedication's kiss upon our pages, swooning sons with steadfast city lights. I went first, and Alan asked me my name, but barely met my gaze. He lingered, though, with Jeff, meandered in his beauty, these two mothers of mine flirting in a way that felt like watching boyish pulp of the initial batted eyes behind my body's constitution. They seemed to wink and dare and coo for several hours. Jeff rejoined me and he showed me his inscription. Alan had addressed him as an angel boy and done a little drawing. But what's more, he would invited Jeff back to his hotel. We were 17, we hadn't been this far away from home, not by ourselves, ever before in our whole lives. Ninety minutes by car from our parents' front door. We were fucking Sam and Frodo at the dawning of the ring. Two bumpkins all mixed up in grander magic. But now, which mother were we going to run to? It's easy to forget what blameless ignorance can be because our culture calls it innocence instead. That heaps all this untrammeled snow and later says it's solid, though the dirt was there from jump and time refines it. Thusly unrefined, I'm just not sure we understood. I know we didn't understand what little sex we'd had. Our bodies are the bodies of our lovers. Young, woman, young women lost in their way too, though smarter. All we knew was hard-souled dude lore sold through locker room and porn. Big titties or whatever, baseball diamond of erotic pilgrim's progress. But we believed good-heartedness would certify desire in eternity. The plebiscite of seekers was the carnival of night. The orgy of fait accompli. Now one of our moms maybe wanted to fuck. She was making good on body promise. Here was the gift in the flesh. We were incandescent with the truth of her and shared her honor there between us, precious drug. First, let me say, we just went home. I just don't think we knew. In the end, at least not for sure what the invitation meant for Jeff. And if he'd gone to find out, then where was I supposed to go? All we did, we had to do together. Mom's response to Jeff's allure had made it true as cosmic fact. So we departed with our intuition written in the stars. We needed nothing else for our fond adventure equation. But now, I think it's a shame. We did it wrong. 
Jeff should have offered up his pretty body to our mother. We should have offered her one body, ours. Because us having two of them was a waste of healthy matter. What I should have done was gone and donated my organs, then poured my excess ooze inside of Jeff. Hold your nose and open up, you fucking corpse my heart's obsessed with. Then made my way as slime into the wombless space where I began as embryo of who I was that day. Then he could have carried me in utero to Alan, and whatever mother wanted would be his. Maybe lots of soulful talk for hours of suspense, and then to be joined in soft, passionate kisses, tingling caresses, dissolutions of the flesh and heights, mysteries, pleasures, trembling heavens, nerves made crushed velvet of pre-cum and spit, pillows then, and slumbers, and a cigarette to meet our raptured soreness in the dark.